Okay, everybody, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, as you know that today, uh, I'll be mainly discussing the solutions for the questions that you are asked in midterm exam two. And then, as I mentioned, I already posted uh, the solution under the tab exams you will see uh, there is a midterm exam two questions and then another pdf file solutions for midterm exam two so that i'll be going over also uh, i hope everybody received an email that i sent uh, this morning letting you know of your midterm exam two grades so you need to look that uh, feedback location where you uploaded your exam two so everybody, have you seen your grades for midterm exam two? Looking right now. I got okay. mine. Yeah, so you look where you uploaded in that tab and then uh, you need to go there. And there is a place called like feedback. There I have written uh, your scores for question one, two, three, and five. And then what is the total score out of 100? In that way I have mentioned. And then if you have any questions and comments on your score, if you like don't agree, then you could uh, contact with me uh, individually uh, through email and then I will be answering you. But now I will be going over the answers for those questions. So looking the answers and then you will be comparing your answers with the solution. And then still if you have any questions and comments or clarification is needed, you are welcome to contact me through email. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, before going this on, uh, before starting this thing, solutions, first I'd like to jump the uh, second slide. You know, like, once again, this is the reminder uh, for your class project presentation. As you can see the date, uh, we have two dates, April 27th and April 29th. And you know that April 29 is the last class for this semester. So on April 27th, I have assigned the first three groups, like project number one, two, and three, you will be presenting. And then uh, group number four and five, you will be presenting April 29. Now, as you can see on top, I have written for each group, you will be presenting 15 minutes. So, now, for example, topic number one, automated external defibrillator, and you are like four uh, students, Brandon, Cody, uh, York Moses, and York Thomas. So now uh, you, you can decide yourself who will start, who will be presenting the one or two slide. In that way, you can divide 15 minutes uh, among you. So in that way, it's a group presentation. So you will be sharing your slide. You can uh, prepare a couple of PowerPoint slides, like on title slides and then um, circuit diagram, how you simulated, what result you got and what is your conclusion, uh, if there is any control diagram. I mean, share everything what you did. Or uh, if you have any references, uh, please mention those. So therefore in total 15 minutes, and then followed by questions and comments, another one or two minutes. So in that way, it will go. So I think everybody is fine with that. Uh, now moving forward. So now I am opening um, the solutions. I think I need to stop this one first and then share again the other one. Uh, everybody, can you see uh, the solutions for midterm exam to the question paper? Not on your screen. Uh, okay, just a moment. Okay. Hold on. Now, can you see? Can you yes. See? Yeah, okay, yeah. You see that this is the exam too? Yes. Uh, yeah, okay, great. 
so that you answered so you know that uh, this is the question that were given at the exam and then at the below i have uh, solved for you so although many of you have uh, solved question number one correctly but still uh, who could not do uh, correctly please have a look now uh, so you say uh, look the circuit so in the circuit diagram uh, r1 r2 c1 c2 values are given and you are asked to determine the transfer function h s v naught over v i s so voltage across c2 over uh, the input voltage so as you can see this is combination of uh, series and parallel circuit so first what i did i calculated the total impedance i mean many of you have used uh, Dude, if it's not you know the mesh analysis voltage divider rule so those are also the fine those are also the correct but here what i am doing i am calculating the total impedance g so you can see everybody see like r2 and c2 is in series and that combination is in parallel with c1 and that whole combination is in series with r1 so and then before uh, applying that parallel and series rule first i uh, converted the circuit into laplace domain uh, for the simplicity purpose so for c1 you know 1 over j omega c1 then 1 over s equal to j omega and c all value was 0 0.1 that i put so it is 10 over s and then for c2 1 over j omega c2 that is giving me 5 over s so maybe someone wanted to say something is it okay so maybe fine so then you see uh, right side those are in laplace domain now look the calculation total j so therefore i have written you know r on plus 10 over s 10 over is the value of c on this is the parallel symbol parallel r2 plus 5 over s and then you know i am just simplifying i am simplifying i am simplifying so i got this expression 2s squared plus 16s plus 10 over s in multiplied by s plus 3. So remember, this is the total g value. So now everybody say by looking the network, uh, what I did because I have the total impedance. So first I calculated the total current. So how much current is flowing uh, through our own total current? And you know, after coming at this point, that current is divided into two parts something is going through c1 and then the rest of the portion is going through r to c2 so you need to know this current which is flowing through c2 and once you get that current you just multiply by the uh, respective impedance which is the c2 value this means multiply by 5 over s then that is the v naught and then you just make v naught over vi this is the uh, idea concept so now moving forward go to the uh, next slide here you see i am calculating the total it this means vi input source over the total impedance that i calculated here so therefore this is the total impedance well and then now i am calculating ic2 this means current flowing through that uh, branch where you need to calculate the voltage. So look my calculation. So this is the total current here, total current expression multiplied by 10 over S. 10 over S is that C on value. Because I am applying current divider rule and uh, I want to calculate current flowing through this branch. So I have to multiply by the impedance of this branch. So that I did multiplied by 10 over s and in the denominator that 10 over s plus that r2 plus c2 value and then i am just simplifying i am simplifying you know finally i got this expression and then your target is to get v naught s so v naught is ic2 multiplied by 5 over s so therefore this is my i2 value i am plugging there 5 over s 
So you know that S is cancelled and then V0 over VIS is 5 over S square plus 8 is plus 5. So this will be the correct answer. So uh, some of you have got here like 5 multiplied by S, you have got completely different term, even your denominator is completely different. So I don't know why you made mistakes. Uh, I, I looked, but uh, you, uh, I mean, briefly calculated. So I was not able to find out, but you started correctly. That's why I have, uh, each of you, I have given some credit like 10, sometimes 15, depending on situation, how you did. I did not give any zero to anybody uh, for this question. But you see, sometimes you got 5 s squared here, someone got 5 s. I don't know like why you remain the S. Probably you forgot to cancel out this one. So this will be the correct answer. So does anybody have any question on this one? Question number one. No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay. Now, there, now, simplify that any more than it having all of that, or is that just how you have to do it every time? As, sorry, what do you have to do? Is is there a way you that can be simplified like any further? Like, do you have to do it with those steps there, or is there any way you could solve it easier? Uh, I mean, the, the, this is one of the you know that is standard process. Also, many of you have done uh, you know mesh analysis. That is also fine. Okay. Like, like you considered hair on voltage, hair on voltage. I think I did nodal analysis on that one. Yeah, that, that is correct. No, that, that is fully correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, many of you almost, I noticed 50% applied nodal analysis. That is fully fine. But whatever technique you use, nodal analysis or the way I did, still you should be getting the same result. Okay. And, and may not necessarily exactly this one. For example, you might get hair 10 then here 2, 16, 10, you know, then the result will be the same. Okay. Yeah, but, but it should be the equivalent or the same result. You might keep it like 10 and then 2 and 16, 10, but that should be the same. Okay. Uh, yes, but, but so I think you are uh, Benjamin Ross, right? You are talking. Uh, so yes, I, I noticed you are fully fine. Your calculation is full. And many of you have used the nodal analysis that, I mean, whatever technique you use, it should be reasonable, it should be logical, that should make sense and the results should be the same. Okay, so uh, moving forward. So that's why, I mean, uh, those who could not uh, solve it correctly, the please have a look even after the class and please compare with your uh, solution what you did. And then, uh, the grade I made or score I have given, if you have any questions for me, so you are most welcome to contact. If needed, I will be changing your grade, so no problem. So I'll be fully fine. Um, so question number two, you see, in an electronic device, a series circuit is employed that has a resistance of 100 ohm, a capacitive reactance of five kilo ohm, an inductive reactance of 300 ohm, when used at two megahertz. So find the resonant frequency and bandwidth of the circuit. So uh, most of you have done this on properly, you got correct result. But in some cases, some of you got this resonant frequency completely different. Like you got one point something megahertz. I don't know, but when looking I mean, this calculation, your equation is correct. But after that, somewhere you made mistake and you ended up completely different result. But still, uh, I have given you like either 15 credit or 10 credit. And sometimes I notice some of you have forgot to calculate the bandwidth. There are like three, four cases. This answer is correct, but you forgot to calculate bandwidth. So then again, depending on situation, I have got 10 credit or five credit. So anyway, you know, this is an easy question. See, you all know resonant frequency F0 is 1 over 2 pi root over LC. Now you can put your result either in radian per second or in megahertz, so you, you, you are fully fine. Um, so in this case, you know, inductive reactance and capacitive reactances were given. So I have written XL equal to omega L or 2 pi FL and XC 1 over 2 pi FC. 
So therefore, from here, L equal to XL over 2 pi F and C on over XC 2 pi F. So, and then finally, you will be getting this result, 8.165 megahertz. And then bandwidth to be, because this is series circuit, R over L, and then 4.188 multiplied by 10 to the power 6 radian per second. So these two should be the correct result. So does anybody have any question? I mean, I noticed uh, most of it. Sorry, Carson? I was just saying, no real question. It's uh -huh. nice to see this stuff worked out step by step, though, because I wasn't very sure and was a little scattered in my approach to it all. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I noticed. I noticed that. That's why, you know, everything I have written for you, because, you know, now we are online. When we are in person, maybe you remember that I uh, explained everything on board, but now I'm not getting that chance to explain in detail on board. So that's why I have written everything step by step. As much as possible, uh, I'm trying to help you. <clears throat> okay, so therefore those who have made mistake, uh, please uh, see your script where you made mistake. Oh, so here one thing, I mean this on, this calculation, this is on over. I mean 300 over 2 pi multiplied by 2 multiplied by 10 to the power 6, then multiplication sign, then it is on over. Initially, like I myself did not put on over, but it should be on over. So on is numerator and this is in the denominator. Please be uh, mine. Okay, so moving forward, question number three. A filter circuit normalized to uh, omega c equal to one radian per second is shown in figure two. It scale the circuit to a cutoff frequency of 10 kilohertz. This means the new frequency is 10 kilohertz and use 15 nanofarad capacitors. This means capacitance, uh, the new value are 15 nano, nanofarad and new frequency 10 kilohertz. So basically you have to find out the modified or the new values for those two resistances and for this inductance. Uh, again, most of you have uh, done this on properly and correctly. But I noticed sometimes some of you did not calculate the R value. You just calculated the L value. And for answer, you wrote L value and the C value. You know, the C values are already here given. So you have to find out R values and then L values. Anyway, so, you know, first I'm cal calculating that KF uh, frequency scaling factor, which is omega C prime over omega C. So omega c was given value, you know, in the problem, omega c was on radian per second. And then the new value is uh, 10 kilohertz, but you have to convert into radian per second. That's why two phi multiplied by 10 multiplied by 10 to the power three. So, and then that is giving me two pi multiplied by 10 to the power four. I just kept in that format. And, C prime, this means new value of capacitors is 15 nanofarad. So from there, I'm writing C prime is C over K m into K f. So where K m magnitude scaling factor is uh, C over C prime into K f. So we already calculated K f value. So then here is that K f and C prime is that 15 nanofarad, 15 multiplied by 10 to the power minus nine which is giving me 1061.03. That is the KM value. So now you have KM value and you have KM value. So now you are ready to solve. So R1 prime equal to R2 prime equal to KMR because in both resistance values are the same, on and one. So that's why both R1 prime and R2 prime will be the same, which is K multiplied by R. So substitute this KM value here, multiplied by one. So therefore 1.061 kilo ohm, or you might represent in ohm, it does not matter. This is the resistance values. And for inductance values, L prime equal to KM over K into L. Just plug in KM and K value and L value was uh, 200. So the new value is 33.77 millihenry or you might express 0 
or 0 0.038 Henry. So that will also work. I think most of you have done this properly and then some of you use differently. So you got different results, but still I have tried uh, to give you credit. I did not give any zero to anybody, I believe. Uh, is there any questions here? No questions so far. Okay, great. Um, so then question number four. You know, the, uh, given the following transfer function, realize the function using the circuit in figure three. Select R equal to two ohm and determine the values of A and C. So R values are given to, you have to find out L and C, provided that the transfer function, which is 4S over S square plus 4S plus 20 is given for this circuit. So now see my solution. So I'm doing in uh, Laplace domain. So VIS, C is on over SC, L is like SL and R is R and this is V naught S. So you have to first find out the transfer function HS or sometimes it is represented by G. That's why I have represented symbol G. It does not matter. You can use H. So V naught over VI. So because this is, I mean, simple series circuit. So I used, you know, voltage divider rule. So you know that what is the total current? That will be VI over G. And G is on over SC plus SL plus R. And then the same current is flowing through R. So R multiplied by the current. So that's why you see initially VI was here. VI over total impedance. That is the total current multiplied by R. So therefore, I have written in one steps because you can easily understand this is the simple series circuit. So I have taken VI here. So now this is my transfer function. And now I am, you know, simplifying. Just see the calculation. So because there is on over SC, so in the uh, numerator, it is getting RSC. And in the denominator, this one plus RSC plus this one, AC square LC. And now because, uh, you know, in the transfer function, there is AC squared, nothing is multiplied with AC squared. So here uh, LC is multiplied by AC squared. So I am dividing numerator and denominator by LC. So in the numerator, it is R over LS, and in the denominator, it is AC squared plus R over LS plus LC. Now you just need to compare this expression with this one, given expression, point by point. That you are fine. So you see the middle term in the denominator is multiplied by R over L. So R over L is 4. Because you see here it was 4S in the transfer function. So an R value is 2. So you are getting L value is half, 0 0.5 Henry. And then on over L, see, third term, third term was given 20, this one. So that's why on over LC is 20 and you got the uh, L value 0 0.5. If you put C value is 0 0.1. Sometimes uh, you got like different values. Someone got 100 farad or some number. Even here you got 0 0.3 Henry or completely different value. I don't know why. Anyway, but still I have given you the uh, partial credit. Uh, and sometimes uh, someone did not calculate C, you only calculate L, or sometimes you calculated C but did not calculate R. There is a, a case that also. Is everybody fine with this one? Yeah, I'm good with that one. Okay, great. So now the uh, last question. It was for the following circuit in figure four, find the resonant frequency. Uh, regarding this question, so many of you have made mistakes. Simply you have used resonant frequency on over two pi root over LC or omega equal to on over root over LC. I mean, that is true when the circuit is fully series or it is fully parallel. That time you can apply that one. But here you see the combination of series parallel. 
So you cannot use in that way. So, but still I have given you some credit, those who have attempted uh, omega naught equal to one over root over LC, or if not equal to one over two pi, I have given some credit, but actually that is wrong. You know? So if it would be fully like parallel, there is no component, like only L and C, or it is the series circuit fully, there is no parallel combination. That time that equation is valid. So everybody see, because this is parallel circuit, so I am calculating Y admittance. So first B sum for capacitor effect on microfarad. So one over XC, XC means one over J omega C that I did plus first because I am calculating Y, so one over J. This is the impedance. So R plus J omega L. So for 40 millifarad. Now, next line you see, this went into the numerator and had on over J omega 0 0.04. And then uh, here, what I am doing, I'm multiplying numerator and denominator by its conjugate, like it was 50 plus J omega 0 0.4. So I'm multiplying 50 minus J omega 0 0.04, numerator and denominator. So why I am doing? Because I will be putting like A plus B into A minus B. I can apply that algebra. And then uh, because it is the multiplication, so J, J will be J squared. So J squared is minus one. So I can eliminate J. That is the goal. So therefore everybody see, still I am keeping this term as it is plus numerator is fine. So in the denominator you look like A plus B into A minus B. So A squared minus B squared. So A squared being 50 squared and then minus this term is squared. But you see, if you multiply J and J, J squared, that will give you minus one, then minus minus plus, and then omega is squared, and then this one, 0 0.040 squared. Now, you know that because this is a parallel circuit, you know the resonant condition uh, for both series and parallel circuit. For parallel circuit, resonant condition is imag imaginary part of the uh, admittance should be zero. Imaginary part at resonance condition. So, because that is your goal, imaginary part. So, because here it is the mixture, there are real terms and then imaginary terms, it is the imaginary terms. So, you just uh, rearrange or organize the terms, real and imaginary that I actually did. So everybody see, because this is imaginary, so it will be this side. And here the, it is the combination of real imaginary. So what I did, 50 over this one. Denominator is fully, you know, the real number. So 50 over this one, this is the real part. Plus J this term, and from here, minus J this over this term. So this means this is your now fully imaginary term. And that is the resonance condition. Imaginary part should be zero. So that I am doing. So this equal to zero. So I eliminated J. You see the calculation. And then just simply algebra. Finally, you are getting omega 4.84 on kiloradian per second. This will be the correct answer. So everybody is fine with this one. I think so. I start to try and work that one out, but I think I ran out of time before I could fully find it because uh, I couldn't quite remember the okay, ways okay. to work that out. Yeah, I yeah, got it. That makes more sense now. Thank you. Okay, yeah, yeah. So please, again, like everybody, uh, because I already posted this one uh, under the tab exam. So please, once again, you look and you see. I mean, whatever grade you got, that is I mean, getting grade on thing, but learning is the another thing. So I recommend you all, everybody, please try to learn. Please try to learn. Again, you recalculate, you open your exam script and uh, please learn because again, you might be facing similar problem in the final exam and again, the FA exam. And again, for your rest of your life, many times in your job field, you might face this type of circuit 
and your uh, boss may tell you, hey, can you look that the resonant frequency is correct for this circuit? Then you cannot but yourself <laughs> calculate the time. You cannot tell your boss that, hey, I don't know how to calculate the um, resonant frequency. Anyway, so, <clears throat> and uh, I understand that for that exam, I asked you five questions, but as I already uh, mentioned you that next time I will be asking you less questions, probably only four questions. So you will get uh, enough time to scan and upload the paper on time. So next time what I will be doing, uh, I will be uploading the exam at least 15, 20 minutes before 1130 so that uh, you can just download that one. And as I said, next time you don't need to write the answer on this paper. You can write your own paper, preferably like uh, A4 size, letter size, a white colored paper, and then you just scan and uh, upload. So that will save your time. So this means uh, at the beginning, you don't need to take a print. And then um, I will make it available around 11, 10 or 11, 15 uh, on eCourse. Then you open it, you start writing, and then uh, you try your best to finish in about one hour and one hour, 15 minutes, and then keep about 15 minutes to scan and upload so that you can finish uh, by 12, 25 so that like uh, it will not overlap Dr. Jacob's class. Last time like it was overlapped. You had the next class and as I told, um, I, I actually fully forgot. I did not realize that you have the <laughs> next class. Once again, I am sorry for that. Um, so again, I promise that I will be asking you only four questions and I will make it available at least 15, 20 minutes before. You don't need to take a print you directly open and you start answering on your own paper by writing down your name. And then uh, please you upload by the deadline by 12, 25, 12, 30 basically uh, on the Dropbox. I will create a Dropbox for midterm exam three. Okay, so is there any questions and comments from anybody? No, I think everything's good. I'm okay. here. It cleared up the only confusion I had with the exam. Yeah, no, it's fine. Really, it was just a time constraint. I felt like I was writing a million miles an hour faster than I could actually think, but it all worked out. Uh, so, and then, is it Nathan Ferrer talking? Yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you you, you are fully fine. Uh, I think you have noticed your grade, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so yeah. thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So therefore, again, uh, regarding the exam, if, if you have any questions, comment, or if you think that, no, it is not justified, uh, you are welcome to email me, and then I will be looking again. Uh, so please, everybody. But um, uh, I remember that I did not give even zero to any of the questions. So whatever you did, uh, partially, I have tried to give you some partial credit here. Yeah. Um, and then uh, in the feedback place, in the comment, I have put individual grade for each question, question on like if you got 20 or if you got 10 or 15, whatever, in that way. So, and then once again, please everybody look, you compare your solutions with what I posted and then still if you have any questions, comments, confusion, you are most welcome. So I'm ready to help you. And then, uh, <clears throat> I think this exam is uh, much better than the first exam uh, for most of the cases. Most of the cases, definitely this exam two will be counted. And then I recommend you all to do again very well the third exam so that we can cancel your first exam. Uh, as I already told you, the policy is that uh, I will be picking up the base two among three exams, midterm exam. So therefore, those who have not done well in exam one, please try your best to cancel that exam one so that I can take exam two, exam three, and I will make an average. And then again, you will uh, give the final exam. And um, I believe you all are submitting your uh, lab reports properly, design reports. 
So like DL upgrade are, are there uh, making grades. Uh, are the uh, lab grader is letting you know the grade for the reports or no? I got a grade for one of my reports, yeah. It got posted. Uh, okay, okay. Actually, there is one uh, Garli student, Jabia Chaudhary. She is basically grading. She is the uh, lab grader, uh, no, no, not the uh, Mahapujalam. I mean, he uploaded, uh, he prepared those uh, video YouTubes uh, and then documents for you, uh, readings, calculations. But Jabia Chaudhary, uh, she is uh, making the grade. So therefore, in case if you have any questions, confusion on the uh, lab reports, then please let me know. Then I will address those concerns to those uh, lab grader and the lab TA. And I think uh, you might expect uh, final practicum sometimes next week. Uh, I think you will be asked some short questions only, uh, maybe four or five short questions, quiz type questions. That will be the final uh, exam or final quiz for the lab. So hopefully soon uh, lab team Mahapujalum will be notifying you. Today I will give him a reminder to contact you and to let you know. Has he told you anything about this final exam or practicum for the lab? He says he's gonna upload something Sunday. Oh, okay, okay, I see, I see. So it will be like a pretty short question. You just need to answer shortly. Typically other year, uh, the students were supposed to do hands-on experiment, but because this time <laughs> you all are at home, uh, you are not able to do hands-on. So just, I told him to do, to ask you some short question. Okay, so uh, at this point, then I am uh, stop sharing. Uh, on Monday, what I'll be doing, I will be letting you know the grade for uh, homework set five. And um, I will be posting the solution beforehand. Hopefully by tomorrow or by day after tomorrow, I'll be uploading the solution for homework set five. I'll be grading and make those available for you. And also I think regarding homework set four, although I already posted the solution and discussed with you, but I think still I have not graded it for you. I will make that available as well. So this means on Monday, by Monday you can see the grades for both homework set four and homework set five. And in the class we will be uh, discussing the homework set five solutions. And with that, like you all are ready uh, to take the exam on coming Friday. And then on coming Wednesday, I'll be making a kind of the gain some practice for the midterm exam three. I will discuss everything little, little so that you are ready fully for the uh, midterm exam three. Any questions and comments? I think everything's good. Okay. So, okay, so then today, uh, that's all. Uh, I'll not be discussing any new things. Uh, with that, then uh, I hope you, everybody, please be safe and uh, have a good weekend. And uh, see you on Monday. See you Monday. Okay. See you on Monday. Have a nice weekend. Okay. Have thanks. a good weekend. Okay. So thanks, everybody. Okay, bye.